Okay, so this is going to be Cisco Call Manager version 11.0 and Cisco Unity Connections 11.0. So this is just a quick overview of the um, interface after installation. So the installation is uh, pretty straightforward, the same as the other you know, version Call Manager, probably 8.6.2, 9.x, 10.x. In 11.x, so install the OVA template, and which builds the disks and the CPU memory, and then you uh, run through the install, answer the questions, you know, IP address, NTP server, DNS, SMTP, etc., etc., etc. Pretty straightforward in a text type interface, and probably the installation is a little bit quicker on 11. Probably looking at uh, between an hour and two hours installation depending on speed of everything. And so here's just the interface. Once I logged in and uh, just gonna go through the menu items, not really much new from 10.5, uh, mostly just a lot of back-end changes, fixes, um, stability changes. And uh, as you can see, um, don't really think that there's any different from 10.5.2 10 and um, uh, once again just going down these menu items and uh, hopefully this will help uh, give people a quick overview of 11.0 and uh, um, if you're planning on moving towards this either an upgrade or a fresh install you can see uh, everything's pretty much still the same LDAP, um, server configuration, region, location, DHCP if you want to use that, device pools, um, licensing still the same through the either um, the prime system that's installed also and uh, or uh, using a prime collaboration to manage everything, push the changes. I'll go through that uh, probably at a later time, the prime collaboration. This is just a base install from uh, on VMware ESX. Uh, this was uh, ESX 5.5. Uh, soon I'll try it on a, a ESX 6.0, but uh, the only thing really on the difference between that is uh, ESX 6 has, uh, the I believe the disks are up to version 11 now, and you can only go back to, f I think, version 8 of the disks. So if you have older versions, then you have to upgrade those or find a way to move them over. So, but um, as you can see, I'm just going through the items here, trying to show where everything is. Uh, I've populated a few things. A um, couple of uh, small items that I've just added in there just to kind of test to make sure it's working properly. And um, hasn't gotten hung up or anything, so... Um, as you can see, again, once again, this is a pretty straightforward installation. Just perusing through the options here. And uh, please uh, put any comments if, uh, if you want to uh, see something focused on a particular menu item or an option or adding something into the system. I can do a quick... Uh, another quick video and add those items in there. Um, one of the things you'll see a little bit later is I've uh, configured the um, interface to the Cisco Unity connection which is also on the next tab over we'll see in a few minutes for the voicemail ports so you'll see that in a couple minutes uh, right now you just see uh, looking at the uh, the pilot for the voicemail, there's the ports right there. It's getting over to these, and set up the ports. Uh, as always, you know, if you if you work with the voice Cisco Voice, you have to have the the naming the same on Unity Connection and Call Manager. If you don't, then they won't uh, register. As you can see on the right side, it's registered with the uh, target, which is uh, this server is. 172.19.103.44 the unity connection is 45 or dot 45 and it won't connect so you know just be trying to figure out what's wrong with it and it's going to pretty much come down to the name and uh, it puts the prefix of the name in there you just have to finish what you want it to be but if they don't match it won't connect and 
you'll be struggling with it. So it's down to the simplest things. So as you can see, here's um, after the uh, ports went over some other options. There's some wireless hotspot, which is a pretty uh, interesting little item there. But uh, that was in version 10.5 also, 10.5.2 also. So that is the ability for a certain model of phones. I believe it's 8845 is the model of phone or uh, I believe the wireless in here one of the configuration options says it's no phones are supported yet that was in 10.5 and 11 but the 10 the documentation for the 8845 says it works with it it basically just turns the phone into a hotspot so kind of like a mini access point and once again uh, the other items over here on the top right I just jumped over real quick uh, same disaster recovery etc and stuff like that so here's the unity connection logging into it take a couple seconds and don't want to say the password and there's unity connection 11.0 the uh, of course no backups been done and I'm not really going to need to do a backup on a, a test demo system Here's some of the users that uh, default users there um, created a couple sample users and this is all pretty much the same too so a lot of back end changes etc stuff like that uh, didn't sync anything didn't create any users and call manager sync them over uh, I'm just going to go down the list here and you know unity connection is you know pretty much down the left side of the list interface seems a little uh, a little more responsive on the call manager and the Unity connection, so probably some you know tweaks to the uh, uh, web interface that Cisco has probably been refining. So good thing that it's kept it pretty similar, so it's easy to find things if you're coming from an upgrade or familiar with an older. Pretty much nine, mm, some eight options here: eight, six, nine, ten, now eleven. The interface is pretty standardized. So, which is a good thing. Uh, as you may know, that the everything on the left side here, and then call manager being on the uh, top. So, I'm not sure. Uh, this kind of looks a little bit like an asterisk type interface. But uh, uh, once again, the Cisco Unity connection similar. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The Everything in here um, carried over. Once again, nothing really entered data-wise in here. So you can see that there's really not much here. Unified messaging for your connection over to an Exchange server. Uh, Exchange 2010, 2013, Office 365, etc. And then your, ac your accounts that you want to synchronize and set up for the mailbox. Uh, partition, search space, if you want to refine down the security. General configuration, cluster information, etc. More, um, more information down here. Uh, got down to licensing. And then we'll just peruse down here to LDAP information that if you want to add this into LDAP, synchronize it. And then we're going to jump down here in a couple seconds down to the ports. And you can see the ports as they're connected over to the um, call manager or the voicemail ports. The phone system, I just left a default name. You can change it to whatever you want. Name of the server. Here's all the information. Most of it's populated already like the other versions. Um, port group configure that, how many ports you want to use, and then the ports, you see they're all there, and uh, as you saw in Call Manager, they're all connected, and pretty much that's it, it's, it's pretty similar.